Okay, so what do we need before getting started with your tax return? Number one, profit and loss. Number two, balance sheet. It, only if your gross revenue sales and assets and or assets are over 250,000. If they're less, we don't need a, a balance sheet. If they're over, we do. So in this case, our gross revenue were a million dollars, so we do need our balance sheet. Uh, our assets were only 98,000, but because our revenue is over 250,000, we do need to have a balance sheet ready. Depreciation breakdown list, so all of your items that had been depreciated throughout the year, we need that the breakdown to know the dates that they were purchased, the amount, and the item that was purchased. And W2, W3s, and 1099s. So you were required to run payroll for, uh, for you as an officer or if you had any employees. So whatever software that you use, they should give you this W2, W3s. And also, if you had contractors that were required to get a 1099, we need that 1099 handy for our tax return. They also It also comes with a 1096 form, so we need that as well. And the amount paid taxes to the state. So if, you, if you're in, in California, for example, then you need to have a breakdown of how much you pay the corporation taxes for. For 20 in 2021 it doesn't necessarily have to be for the tax year 2021 but if you paid it in 2021 we need the amount of how much you paid because there will be a deduction on the irs level but it will not be a deduction on your state level so when we enter it on our federal tax return we need to enter it in a separate space so when we do our state return it will add it up as not as a deduction anymore okay so have all of those ready and this is what a profit and loss will look like we're going to work on the my company um bogus company called successful company this is our and our gross as i told you it's over two hundred fifty thousand, so we need the balance sheet and then this is all expenses more expenses here and this is our balance sheet our assets are ninety eight thousand. And these are fixed assets or so all our, our equipment. Sorry. So all our equipment and, and computers are here. We need a breakdown of this for to determine our depreciation. And this is our liabilities and equity accounts. Okay, so we will go into this link, turbotax.intuit.com slash small business dash business taxes and make sure it looks like this it's it lists partnership s corporation c corps and llc uh, we don't want to work on the s on the schedule c self-employment one that's that's not what we're doing here we're working on the s corporation tax return okay it's about 170 and we will download the PC window. I'm not going to order the CD. We're just going to download it on our computer and work for my computer on the desktop version. Okay, get that done. Okay, so the software was downloaded. Now we're going to start a new tax return. Begin. Yes, I'm a new TurboTax business. Yes, you can import QuickBooks. You want to import QuickBooks? No, I'll enter myself because there might be some funky stuff that I rather do but myself. Um, business tax return. This is the one for uh, the S Corp. The form that we're looking for is 1120S. Okay, next. So it says the starting. I have another screen and it says starting new return. Gather information, name of the com corporation, let's call it successful company. Oh, I can't even spell today, company. Uh, we don't need a DBA because I don't have one. Um, we are located in California. Uh, done. Uh, no, for now, we're not working on the California state. 
okay so which best describe your business uh, we are a consulting company or the successful company is a consulting and so we'll just click here if your company does uh, sell products if you sell anything online with your logo on or if you sell um, you know Amazon stuff you will click here as well um, this will be just a description on one of your forms um, okay but in this case we we'll just do here and we are going for consulting instead here consulting advertisement I hope that's how it's spelled. And then next, uh, we incorporated in January 1st, 2021. Now the S election. The S election, so this is a quick explanation. Whenever you form your LLC or your corporation, you go through the state to do this. Either you use legal Zoom, you get an attorney, a register agent, um, they will get you the LLC or corporation um, documents but on top of that in order to be taxed as a as corporation with the IRS you will need to apply directly with the IRS and get a letter from them that says you are uh, an S corporation you can file taxes as such and if so then you will just click yes and this was um, the election was effective on the same day but if you haven't done that yet, if you only done the registration with the state, then you will need to uh, make the election separately. And TurboTax will help you make the election on their form. So this is what you will do. You will click no and we'll go and continue and complete this form. So tell us what you choose. Uh, make you choose so we will do that. It has to be on a, the same day or day after you incorporate it with the stay. So it will be in the same day. Uh, we're incorporating on the 1st of January 2021. So we're electing to be an S Corp the same day. Okay. Did you succeed? Successful company also open a business on 2021. Mm, yes, we did start it on 1 1 21. This one we already filed. No, we have not filed the score. The election. This is the election, and the form is two five five three. So no, we haven't done that yet. That's what we need them to do it. And uh, this is just indicating that all the shareholders needs to sign this form. Did not make the financial without seeking to accounting or legal advice. Okay. So when file this election. This is just telling you that uh, we need to file the 553 form on time, which it's three months after you incorporate it with the state or form the LLC with the state. So in this case, we did it on January 1st, 2021. Then we have until March to get to file it on time. If we haven't done it on time, then we are late. Nothing to worry about. Um, they will it's basically all we have to do is just say an explanation of why we we file a late and that's all we got to do I'll show you how to do it soon filing this election late yeah this is the one of the forms that they TurboTax will send for you in our explanation why we didn't file is because we missed the deadline we didn't miss to file it and that's it you don't have to give any more information other than that okay and we uh, incorporation information we'll stay we incorporate in california and election was 2021 first january 1st 2021 uh, me this is my company so uh, this is my information and since changes since ein issued now, so whenever you form your LLC or incorporate it with the state, you they would have given you an um, IRS number or EIN number. So we haven't changed that ever since. So it will say, I will put no changes. Select the corporation will be issue. 
calendar year, January 1st to thir December 31st. It's always, it should be default to have this calendar year for your corporation. The QSST election, um, no, uh, this is for an S corporation to be taxed as a trust. It gets a little complicated, so if your S corporation is simple, it's just you. Uh, don't worry about this, we just mark no. Uh, before filing form, must obtain a sign comes of shareholders. Yes, so the shareholders um, will be just you. Print statement, mail this form. Let's print it. Do you want? Yes, do you want to enter? Any? Yes. So here's the shareholder information. It will be your information since you are the owner who will have the same address your social security number not the EIN but is this is you as the person the shareholder and you have a hundred percent in 2021 yes my year Tax year ends on December 31st. That's default. That should be it. Acquire on January 1st, 2021. Continue. Done. So this form, most likely, I will show you after I review it, but most likely we'll need to print, sign, and upload it to TurboTax so they will file. When we e-file the return, this form will be part of our e-filing and this form it's again the two, the form 2553 which will allow us to be taxed as an escort if you haven't done that yet so the, the cons consent statement is complete so again we will print out this form sign it and attach it back to TurboTax so they can e-file it with this form this is what the statement says. Uh, do you need additional time? No, because we will do it right now. Title. So when you have an S corporation, you're either the president of the company and so, or secretary. Uh, we will do that. Uh, yes, president, treasurer, uh, CFO. We'll sign this for and date it and sign. So we'll sign it with today's date. Next. So this is what the form looks like. This is the form that tells that we're filing late. All this code. Um, but everything else should be uh, completed. No more. So we will sign here and we will sign here. No, sorry, here. This should have our information. That's it. And don't worry about anything else. Uh, I don't see them that they completed. No, they, hmm. they didn't complete this for us, so we will do it manually. Acquire 2021. My social is two, two, two. This is a big social and 1231st is tax year ending. And <coughs> that's it. So the only first two pages that we need to sign print election. And boom, this is what I got. Um, we again, if you have no, this one I will definitely you will not. I wouldn't e sign it, print it out, sign it, um, and upload it back to the software. Hopefully, it gives us a place to enter it either now or later.
Okay, so additional information on your business. It already shows that we have consulting and advertisement, so that's it. We don't have anything, any additional uh, details on my business. Do you pay any shareholders, employees, or contractors in 2021? Yes, I paid myself. I run payroll for myself. I'm 100% owner of this business. I also had an employee during the year and uh, one or a few contractors that I have paid throughout the year that I collected W9s from and that I also pay, gave out 1099s in January, in the end of January. Again, my, my software could do it for me. If you have a software that runs payroll and pays contractors, they should give you a report of all of this. And we need it because um, we're telling them in this return that we had filed payroll, we have run payroll, and payroll has a requirement to file certain tax returns. And we also have paid contractors, and so we need to file those 1099s, only if it's required. So if we have one of your contractors give you a W-9, and on the W-9, it says that he's an S-Corp or he's a C-Corp, then you're not required to give him a 1099 at the end of the year. Just as long as you have that W-9 that shows that, then we're fine. We don't need to do that. We don't need to give him any 1099s. But we need it for any audits. Um, that If the IRS comes back and audits your return, that because you marked here that you paid the contractors, but you didn't file any 1099s, then they will come back and ask, for those 1099s and you can just show them the w9s that says that you're not required to file 1099s for them so that will do it okay prepare and file, file your w2s and 1099s that's an additional expense or additional service that they want you to do file through them those w9s and 1099s like i said i already done my i already run payroll in Gave out my 1099, so I don't have to do this. Uh, and if your your software probably already done it too, so you just go and get the reports from them. You don't need to hire TurboTax to do this for you. Vehicle expenses. So my company um, leased a vehicle during the year. For most of the year, I lease company vehicle. It was under my name, personal name. Um, but it was used for business. So that's legit. You don't have to get a vehicle for the business with the business name if you're the owner too. So I, in my case, I'm 100% owner of this business and I got my car under my name and I use this car only for business. And uh, so this is what I mark here. I bought, I ended up, buy, ended up buying a, a car at the end of the month, at the end of the year. So I own a vehicle and I also lease a vehicle during the year, during 2021. I didn't reimburse myself. I just basically any expense, I run it through the business. Any monthly payments, any uh, lease payments was paid directly from the business to the financial company that gave me the, the car. Next. Schedule K-1 received. So no, I did not receive any K-1s. So whenever you file your S-Corp tax return, you as a co corporation as, are given out a 1099 to the shareholder. This question is asking if you as a corporation have received a 1099, I mean a K-1. And no, I don't have any businesses that own my business that will give me a K-1. So no, I didn't receive a K-1. Uh, they want me to transfer QuickBooks into TurboTax. I'm not going to do this because sometimes they messed up and I don't want to go through all of this. I'd rather enter it manually, which it's, trust me, it's better. Enter your corporation information, your EIN. This is very important. You should have have it from the IRS and your address and phone number. Physical address, no, it's the same. I didn't change my address. 
Are you using calendar tax year? Yes, calendar tax year is just January 1st, 2031st and through December 31st, 2021, what your profit and loss will show. Uh, most companies have a calendar year. You will have a fiscal year if you have submitted a form to the IRS and required requested uh, to be taxed in a different year. Um, but if you haven't done anything, calendar year is your tax year. Reporting income and expenses. Here we go. We are cash method of accounting is the most common method. Yes. So you most likely are in a cash method. Do not get confused with the accrual. Accrual method is basically when you invoice somebody and you count that as an as an income. But generally, we don't count anything as income unless we get paid. And same with expenses. If you bill somebody, we won't count it as an expense until we actually uh, pay that bill. Okay, so uh, cash method is your way to go. And again, you have to have a different type of accrual requirement if you have the other method um, of accounting. But yes, to cash, cash method of accounting. Any purchase, good purchase for resales, uh, rest of custom goods. Also, if you have sold, if you have items that you are reselling, then yes, this it's nothing crazy. It's just if you you know, let's say you are in a in a warehouse, your business is a warehouse, and you buy and sell product, then your cost of goods sold is what you're selling. And it's just a different purpose on the line, on the tax return. It's a different line, but it's, if you, but if you don't sell anything, you just have a service business like me, then I don't have any cost of goods sold. My expenses will all be listed on regular expenses. Um, yeah, because I don't have any products. Okay. So do you want to report purchases? No, I don't. I don't have any purchase report. Inventory, I'm a service business. I don't have any inventory. I don't have anything manual and inventory. If you have kept record on your profit and loss and balance sheet of your inventory, then yes, you will click here so you can enter that information. But if you haven't and you're not required to, then you just don't include this report. IRS business code. And so I found mine, but if you need to look for yours, let's say you're a streamer and you can't find it. Let's try to find something that's closer to it <clears throat> because the IRS does not like when you enter 9999. Uh, you are a service. So we have here tax services, memo, other information is included internet publishing and broadcasting. I think that's the closest one. So always try to look for anything that's close to your business and I like that instead of putting 999, the IRS does not like it, trust me. You're asking for an item on that one. So, okay, we'll just change it to that one for the sake of it. Continue. Change in ownership? No, I was always 100% uh, owner of this business during 2021. So in other words, no change of ownership. Confirm your S corporation information. Yes, this is the name. This is my EIN. I'm in California. Sold in advertisement. That's not how you spell advertisement. Think. and yes paid employees paid contractors yes and I have a w-2s and I have 1099s that I filed during the year I don't need to show this or submit anything when I file this return but I already submitted to the IRS so they already have it on their files so if I put yes they already know if I put no then they don't have it on their files um, and if I put yes and I didn't file anything, that's a red flag. Okay. Um, yes. No reimburse vehicle expense. I didn't receive a K1. I 
did use QuickBooks, but I'm not going to transfer my QuickBooks to, to TurboTax to avoid any confusion. It's a calendar year cash method, not cost of goods sold, no inventory, no ownership change. Okay, and then we'll continue. Entity own, entities own. Cal additional reporting is required for ownership interest in the following and type of entity. No, there's no foreign corporation or partnerships that owns this business, only me. Keep it simple. No. Same thing. It's just reviewing a few things. Is this a final return? No. I. If you click final, that means that they're closing out your EIN. And you. this is the last year you're filing your S corporation because you went bankrupt or... You are not doing business under the EIN anymore, so be careful in here. I mean, I'm still doing my business. I'm still having my bank accounts open, so everything is good. So nothing. So no, number one. Uh, bought or sell business during the year? No, I didn't sell or buy any business. Issue bonds? Nope. Uh, restricted stocks? No. Stock options? No. My S corporation is simple. Uh, I had no debt cancel again. Modify. Is this a tax shelter? Of course not. Uh, has file require a married to advisor? Nope. And section 163? Nope. This are if you're a very um, sophisticated tax return and you have something that's off you know but if we're just a 100 percent owner on one company or our s corporation then none of this will apply to us okay i don't have any passive no i do my advertisement i talk to my clients there's no passive income coming into this and um if if you click yes on one of these make sure you understand what they are i'm not going to explain one by one just know that if you are a regular business and don't have any other owners or owner, any other different you know any debt or any passive income then you're just no 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 in all of this okay and next do you here's another question about the contractors remember how we talked about contractors filing 1099 uh, payments requiring a 1099. Do you make any payments in 2021 that were required to file a 1099? In my case, I did file 1099s. So yes and yes. Um, if you paid contractors and didn't file 1099s, you will click no. And that's basically it. But I did in my case, I paid yes and then I did file 1099s. So only click yes if you, have, if you have filed 1099s. If you haven't filed 1099s, I will click no. Former SIG Corporation a question. So if you before you were an S Corp, you were a C Corp before, then those two will apply. Again, this my corporation was always an S Corp, and I didn't have any anything change from for those for the for the S Corp. So say. It was always an S-Corp, so no, no in both of them. Okay, PPP loan forgiveness. And twenty. this only applies for 2021. If you have um, gotten uh, the PPP loan and they've forgiven the amount, then you will click yes and enter the amount. And this is not taxable. It's just reporting purposes. And it will add, add to your basis. But if it's... If you didn't, I didn't, so I'm just gonna click no. Get organized and then return accounting records, payroll report, depreciation schedule. This is just telling you what you need to do your taxes. We've already talked about it on the first, on our first slides. We'll go over this. Enter the shareholder information. Uh, again, I'm the only shareholder, so I'll enter my information. My uh, social security number. My mailing address is the same one as the business. Check if shareholder lives in a different state. No, shareholder is not a person. Nope. 
took if uh, last year sucks for last year and the shareholder hell shares in if this was last year shareholder no yeah i'm the only shareholder so that's it distribution and shareholders did any take money or property out of the account yes i took some distribution not loans or not salary and it will show on my balance sheet amount pay so my balance sheet let's open up my balance sheet and I'll show you where to find it. So my distribution will be here in the equity account. And mine is under owner's pay and personal expenses. So those are my distributions. A5, A25. Payments for shareholder loans. No, I didn't take any loans. And um, they're calculating. This is to calculate my basis. So basic, basically, basis are what you have contributed into the business, into your corporation. And in case any year you have losses, like after your income and expenses and their losses, then the basis will allow you to take the losses on your personal tax return. If you don't have any basis and you have losses, then you won't be able to take those losses on your tax return. Um, but my business is making profits, so I don't got to worry about this too much. This is only for losses. Uh, yes, I'm a 100% owner. Let's get the best possible tax outcome. Okay, so here's where we're going to enter our income and expenses we start all with your income business income investment income other income and k1 if we receive one the only one that i'm going to fill out will be business income because that's all i have done during the year i only receive income from my business deal with my clients and and all of that so we'll do sales service receipts so. Client service provided. So on my PL, let's put it right here. So I take it out of my my income. It's one million three nine. And this is a fake profit and loss, so don't think I make a million dollars doing this. Uh, one, two, three, two. Uh, that's if you have different categories. Um, I just have one in my service. I have, let's say, I have one client. If you want to have, let's say, your Twitch income, and then you have um, um, any other, you know, um, Stripe accounts, any of that, then you can separate them. But the total needs to be the same as your. Uh, total income for that for the year so if you want to separate it you could do that if not just enter it as one line that's completely fine that's what I did okay there's no returns and that's it I guess I don't have any income like investment income like if I have dividends from the bank on my business account I didn't have any because the banks were not giving any interest uh, any properties no I didn't dispose of any bank business property i don't have any other income no royalties no nothing um items you can skip uh yeah k1 because i didn't receive a k1 okay so the first expense we have listed is depreciation i already entered one but i'll go ahead and start entering the rest because we have a few items on, my, on our depreciation list so we'll click star i only enter a desk uh, i will show you how to enter those assets so uh, so we'll pull out the list that I 
requested in the previous or the beginning of the video basically is the list of all our assets we bought this year we bought desk we bought equipment uh, a laptop microphone so we have them listed and this should be on your balance sheet and so let's do that i already enter um, my desk my desk i enter only one amount which is the total even though we have purchased two and the reason is because it's so small that it's okay if you group them as long as my limit is two thousand so if it's under two thousand i can group them and just put one line and you can depreciate it because we're going to do the uh depreciate it all in one year because my company oh the successful company has uh, a big income for the year for 2021 so we want to depreciate as much as we can everything in one year depreciation usually is you can depreciate it within five years seven years 27 years depends on what item you have but there's a section 179 that allows you to depreciate all of it in one year but it has to be not it has to be but if, as a technique or as a good practice you want it to depreciate it in one year only if you have income so if you have um after all your expenses you still have income this this depreciation will come in and you want to take it all in one year because you want to take the most at the beginning or the first year you know if you don't have an income if you're running at a loss then you that's when you would rather do it every five years seven years or the life of the depreciation it's given based on the, uh, the type of assets you have so again in this case for 2021 we did really good after all expenses we still have a big income so we want to take all all the depreciate all our items depreciated in one year okay so let's do this uh i'm gonna put it right here i'm gonna put it on the other side just so we have a full window so my description is again i already did this one so i'll go ahead and start with equipment equipment i'm going to group up to 2000 so i'll just do this the first two uh, it's an equipment it was bought on the first of 2021 and if you add this to amount it gives you 184287 and that's what we'll enter this is the amount this is the balance so don't look at the balances look at just the amount of what you purchased the item for in the current year okay so we'll type here equipment when did you buy it we bought it in the beginning of the year 2021 yes this was 100 percent we'll continue it and this was equipment equipment is right here continue and how we categorize this asset if we're using manufacturer no we don't have a manufacturer but, da, 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 but films and tapes we do have films and tapes so this is this type of equipment we bought in this company was to uh, film and do more um, content for my consulting business because we're doing we're doing some videos to promote our business so we needed to buy some new equipment this year so general purchase tool most of the equipment will fall under this furniture over here so we have desk we have computers things like that will go here and if you have uh, a rental property this, this is your business the rental business and you are buying things for the house that you're renting out like refrigerator stuff like that then it will go here but this is not a rental company this is a consulting company so any equipment will go here okay continue enter the amount you pay for this asset like i said it was 18 42 87 um turbo tax will round out for you which is fine don't have to worry so much about the cents uh, how do you want to deduct this item like i said this is where the 179 comes in don't take it and take it that just says that we're going to take it the whole year that's all you got to think about okay deduct all are part of the item 
in the first year. And it only allows you to take it if you have income for the year. So we have a lot of income for the year and we want to appreciate it in the entire item in one year. So we'll click yes. And this is telling you your net business income is this much. It's larger than the 179, which the limit is 1 million. So if you have more than that, it will only let you take a portion of it. However, we still haven't entered all our expenses. So we don't know if this is the, our net income that we're going to be taxed on. So for now, just click continue and eventually this will get adjusted at, at the end. Uh, and most likely it will give us the entire deduction of, of the 1842. If it doesn't give, if you made over a million dollars and it doesn't give you all that, the deduction then don't worry we'll give it to you it will store it so the next next year you can take the deduction or the remaining of the deduction but right now i like i said we are above that the limitation but it's because we haven't entered our expenses we're just starting entering our expenses so we don't know their final number which most likely will be below this and we'll be able to take the full deduction this year okay so here the total amount of asset, how much of this amount do you want to deduct? Always, all of it, this entire amount, and then the summary for this item. Next, so I will continue on my own to create this list based on the report that I generated in the beginning, equipment, laptop, nothing, nothing fancy here. I'll enter it and I'll come back to you guys with the next expense. Okay, so I wanted to finish this up with you guys before I move on to the next expense. So uh, just keep an eye here. Don't freak out if it says depreciation 2210. It's because we're not depreciating the, the, the items again. We are taking section 179. Um, so it won't show there, but if you, once you're done entering all your expenses, you will click done. And here's the list. If you scroll down, section 179, this is your deduction. So it's basically the same amount of, as what you enter. Um, the section 79 is the same amount. So we're depreciating in full for in one year. Instead of current depreciation, it says zero because we're not depreciating anything. We're taking section 179, which is taking the entire expense. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you guys know this. I'm done. Done. There you go. Okay, oh, another thing on depreciation for cars. Um, I didn't end up, we didn't end up buying the car in 2021. We bought it in 2022. That's why I didn't enter it. But just so you guys know, if you have a car that you purchased in 2021 and is full uh, for the business, then you can enter it here. Uh, like it's full, I mean, like you use it only for business. Like you go from the office to of the bank, the bank to see clients, to, you know, anything that goes from the office to to business or if you have a home office and then you drive from there to see your clients it's 100 percent business because you have another vehicle that you use for personal because you know you have to go to the grocery store you have to do personal stuff then you will have a, a company vehicle it doesn't have to be under the company's name it just have to be used only for business so this is how you will enter let's say it was 1 2021 and it was used 100% for business. If it was used less for for business, <clears throat> then you can change the depreciation or like the use. You know, if you use it half for business, half for personal, then you can change that here. But um, we'll select 100%, okay? And you will go here. And in order for this vehicle, this is a big question I always get, for it to be full depreciated in one year, it doesn't matter if you took a loan or not, this is a purchase vehicle. If you paid in cash or if you took a loan, um, you will depreciate the amount of that you paid, including your down payment and your loan amount, okay? and. 
it, the auto it's under 600,000 if it's a small car like a Honda Civic then it will be at 600 pound if it's a 600 pounds or more uh, as long as it's not a minivan and I'm sorry as long as it's not a van it could qualify as a 600,000 pound vehicle now this is the key because these are the only uh, vehicles that you can qualify to to for section 179 that you can spend the entire amount that you paid on the vehicle in one year okay so uh, you can just Google your the type of vehicle that you have and then see if it's under or over 600 pounds sorry so it's over over under under so these are under and these are over this is very key for the software to let you take the entire amount in one year or let you take the amount um, uh, during five years I think yeah five years of the life of the car okay so let's say we do qualify it's we have a four f-150 so it's over 600 pounds we'll click there and continue so enter the amount so the, the car was worth or the price that you know my contract was was for 55,000. 50, 55,000. That's in, that includes the down payment, that includes the, the loan for the car. And you know, all the stuff that uh, is included in the car. Continue. Then this this gave me the the option to do the section 179 deduction. I'll deduct the whole because again, I made money and it makes sense for me in my case to deduct it in the, the entire year. You can also opt not to take it the whole year, but I will, you know, if you bought that 600 or 6,000 pound over, then you can select that. Now, if let's say we, it was, uh, it was a small car and it's worth the same. See, it doesn't give me the option here to, to do the 179 section because it's at 6,000 pounds and under and so we will it, we just can't take that 179 section so we can't take the full amount that we paid on the vehicle on one year we'll have to spread it out in five years okay so that's basically all i wanted to show you on the vehicle and but i didn't buy a vehicle so in 2021 so we don't have we don't have that listed here yes we'll delete it done 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 okay next expense okay so our next expense is compensation and benefits and this is what we need our w-2s for salaries and wages let's get started and we have our w-2s W2s here, we have employee one who is not a shareholder, which is pay them, he's not part of our business, it's just an employee and employee two, same thing. Um, the only shareholder and officer, it's let's say it's me, and I get paid this much from the business, and that's how they get much they get paid. So let's see what it's asking us for. It's asking us for enter the office information on the next screen. Mm. Okay, so shareholders, so shareholders that are not officer, officers, and are more than two percent ownership, they none of them are. So there wouldn't be any anything here because, again, we're paying here the officer which is me and I am a hundred percent owner of this business so the, I'm the only shareholder okay so will be here anything all other employees that will be my other two employees uh, my other two employees there will we will look at the w2 line one so it's let's add them up 26 five uh, nine five plus our second employee it's 21 one three they only work part-time obviously so it's 
total is 4,808. Continue. And now is where we enter the officer information. Again, I'm the officer and I'm the shareholder. If I had another shareholder that I was paying, um, you know, my uh, salary, then I will have entered in the one before. If they're just shareholders that are, I, I'm paying them for, for stuff, for, you know, for working for my company, but they're not the officer. I'm the only officer, so. Okay, let's do full name. My name is Ebony. Da -da. My social is da -da -da -da. I don't remember. Two, 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 two. Okay. And again, I'm 100% owner. Time to birth of the business is the only thing I do. Common stocks own and preferred stocks zero. We don't have any preferred stocks because we're an S corp. S corps doesn't issue any preferred stocks. It's a tricky question. So zero next. And since the officer is more than 2%, we should sure to include cost of medical insurance and fridge. So my salary, my salary is 51,000. 51, if I had any insurance, I would have health insurance, nothing else, health insurance. I would have had to include it on my payroll. So every time I pay health insurance, it will be run through my payroll and I will pay um, pay the insurance from my business account. If I didn't run it through payroll, then I cannot take the insurance deduction, what it was saying on the other one. So, and because it will show up here, number one, and then a deduction somewhere here in the W2, it will say health insurance amount, blah, 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 the amount that you paid. But I didn't pay health insurance for myself, so I only pay wages, and this is what. Uh, you'll just enter whatever is on line one. This is your wages, 51,000, period. Okay? Because we want everything to match. We want what, what it was previously filed. Those W-2s and W-3s were filed with the IRS already. Okay, so they have it on their files. And in our tax return, we kind of match. We want to match what is in our file so that's why we have to run payroll through or we have to run repair health insurance through payroll in order to take the deduction correctly um, that was the question that they had and that's it I paid myself no other officer it's just me so done and we have our salary so this is this is the number that needs to match exactly to your w3 so we use w2s which it looks like this, it's just description of each salary. And then we we'll use our W3, which is right here. W3 will look something like this, and it gives you a full amount of how much it was paid to the employees, officers, shareholders, everybody for the year. Okay, so it's 55,808, and we want the number to match our final salary amount. So click check we did a good job here the next expense is payment to independent contractor this is what we need our 1099s 1096 it's not as as accurate as the w2s and w3s because w2s and w3s we need to have the same amount um, on our tax return that's on our w3s but on 1099s we don't necessarily have to have the same amount because to issue 1099s to somebody, they either need to be paid over $600 during the year. So if you paid someone less than that, you don't need to give them a 1099. So we won't have that recorded. And or file those 1099s to with the IRS or the state. Um, and or they're foreign contractors. So if you hire somebody from another country, then you don't you can't give them a 1099 because they don't have a social security number so that's why the 1099s don't necessarily have to match to what's reported on your profit and loss and on the tax return but at least it's a base is the minimum that we have to have so let's say let's see here this is our 1099 what 1099 looks like we paid person one 1600 and person two 750 and our 1096 is a total of both. 
So all over 1099 is equals 2362, and we only gave out two forms. And again, this should have been filed by January 1st of the following year. Um, yeah, this one, January 1st, 2022. So this one already filed, which is taking the numbers from it. So this is what it shows in the 1099s that we paid, but in our PL and our profit and loss, it shows my contractors that I paid. Where are you? Contractors that I paid 3516. So this is the, the, the entire amount that I paid to them. Um, so this is what I will enter in, in here. Even though it doesn't match my 1099s, but this is the correct number because again, there are some contractors that I paid during the year that didn't require to file a 1099 for. So that's what we will do. We will enter and and take a look at here and my wages. My wages does match again what's on my tax return and it does match to what's on my W3. So we're doing a good job so far there. Um, so let's go here, enter again. This amount has to come out from your PL and have your 1099s, 1096 as a backup to be at least, you know, that's the minimum amount that you should have in and as this number. Okay. Yeah. Don't mix this with those W2s. It's just 1099s or what's on your PL. Okay. And retirement, we didn't have any retirement. Actually, yes, we did pay. We did pay retirement, separate retirement contribution. So this amount was calculated and paid. And this is 25%, 25% of the salary of the officer. So um, in this case, remember, we go back to our W-2s. We knew during the year that we're going to get paid 51,000. So out of this 25% is 12,750, which is this amount. So this is what we contributed to our retirement as a SEP retirement account contribution. We paid that in 2021, so we can take it as a deduction, and that's what they're asking for here. In this case, I qualify because I am um, an officer in run payroll, and the rule says that I can take up to 25%. Uh, talk to your financial advisor and to have them, you know, open a retirement account for you if you don't have it yet. You might still be able to contribute for this year. Uh, for 2021 if you're filing before the deadline the the extension deadline so you might still be able to take us a deduction so speak to your financial advice and see which one is better because i hear that solo 401k works too if you are one officer and owns the entire business and don't have any other employees or employees that are part-time uh, but yeah your financial advisor will be able to clarify that better Okay, so let's go here, retirement plan contribution. And this this um, contribution doesn't need to be run through payroll, like health insurance. is You can just pay it from the business account directly to them and take it as a deduction. It says already contributed for this plan, yes. Uh, the total contribution was 12 7 uh, has a retirement plan and will contribute too. So this is if you haven't and you will contribute for 2021. Or we like to start a plan for 2021, 2022 and will not contribute the plan. Um, so yeah, we have this here and that's what we'll, we'll click, enter the amount and next. So here's our number, insurance, health and other benefits. Insurance and other benefits. So here we will list medical insurance health insurance and all the benefits that we had paid to employees or officers that are not shareholders or shareholders that are not officers um and this is because it will be listed on our profit and loss in a different line if it's health insurance paid to us as a hundred percent owner and officers then 
that W or yeah, your W2 would have had include this amount in your um, your salary. Like over here, if you see, this is an example of an officer that have paid health insurance in his salary, in her salary. So her regular salary was 75,000, but health, health insurance was included on her W-2 on line one. So when she's doing her tax return, her wages is this deduction, even though she only received this much. And the reason is because here it's where her health insurance was included. And over here is explicit, uh, separated 6,000. So the difference between these two numbers is this number. Okay, so on 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 her P and L, her deduction is bigger, even though her salary is less. It is because we're including the health insurance. Now, when she does her personal return, she's going to include this amount, so she's going to be taxed at a higher higher than what she received. But there's uh, on a Schedule K one one worksheet, you can deduct this insurance straight from this income. So that's how we deduct. Health insurance, if you're an S corporation owner and officer, okay. And yeah, same goes for the rest. And so if you pay that, it will be on your profit and loss, and you can enter the amounts here. But again, if you pay it through payroll for yourself, and you're the officer and shareholder, then you already enter it on your W two. You don't need to include it here again. Okay, next. Uh, payroll taxes this number comes out straight from our PL. we have our PL here and we have payroll taxes it has a line so if you're if you're using QuickBooks to run payroll you should have the numbers separately separated like that if you have other softwares you might have this number different and this might this number different if you recorded it you know however you record it um, because the way that they distribute the money is different what you will do is just make sure wages match what's on our w2 and the difference will simply be our payroll taxes um, key is that it has to be at least you know less than 10 percent taxes from our wages so see our wages are five thousand our taxes will be around uh four thousand no more than that no more than five five thousand five thousand will be around ten percent so we're looking at a nine percent eight percent um that our payroll payroll taxes will be compared to our wages okay so but again, if you have QuickBooks, then you should have the numbers separated like that. This should match exactly what the W3 says, and this will be our difference for taxes, payroll taxes. Four, seven, five, three, four, five. Okay, for the rest of the business expenses, we're going to put our PL next to each other and compare to. Okay, so here we go. We have, I started entering business expenses, but I'd rather do it together. So the most common, here's the list that is very similar to our profit and loss. So we have accounting fees of $58.95, bank charges $12.47. Let's highlight them so we know where to use them. Um, cars, I'll come back for that. I won't highlight it so I know it's missing. And then we have computer. I already entered contractors on the previous page. Education and training. I don't see a list here. So, and there's not rent, not repairs, advertisement, none of that. So, it'll be in other expenses. Education and training, as you see here. Uh, this I entered on mistake, so we'll erase that. I'll explain explain to you more on when we go to vehicle. Uh, so education now taxes. I pay 
uh, corporate taxes, the state taxes, we have to enter in a separate space because it is deductible for the IRS, but it's not deductible for the, t for the state because you, we can deduct the state taxes on our state return, same as the federal, we cannot deduct federal taxes on our federal return. But for the federal, we can deduct state taxes. So we have 13, only if it's paid to the corporation. However, in this case, but this year, we have what it's called for California. Um, if you paid in 2021, uh, some taxes, they're called P PTE, pass-through entity taxes. And uh, you can deduct it as, as an expense. Um, and we'll, we'll enter it in, we can enter it there because we can, no, continue, taxes, other taxes, no, it has to be here because again, it's not deducted for your tax. So anything that you put here in state income taxes will be added back on your state return for California. So we will do it together. This one. And so this two together is 96 47 96 175 again this is the special taxes that we're able to deduct because we pay it through the business and if you file some rules you can do it but typically if you pay taxes for your personal return you cannot deduct it on your corporate level you have to do it on your personal um, return this is only for 2021 and I believe 2022 that we can do this if it's paid correctly through the state website. So basically what it's here is we're paying for personal taxes through the business account or through the business yeah, account on the French tax bar on the state. Again, this is an exception and this is just if it was paid, meaning that deadlines. We do our books so we know all of this stuff. I will give more information on this and the description on the content of this video. Okay, so next, holiday parties. Uh, I will put it down here. This year, meals and entertainment are 100% deductible this year and I believe next year, 2022. So we can deduct it all in full, oops, let me highlight this, I have a logic fees, so this, those expenses are uh, expenses that belong specifically for this company, this type of company, eight, uh, legal and professional fees, I believe we have a column for that, in the most, in the common business expense, Legal professional fees. Meals and entertainment. We should have one line for it. Yes, here. So most, of, yeah, the meals, amounts of corporation spend on meals at a restaurant. So meals and entertainment will qualify as an expense if you um, went to a meal with a client, with with customer, no, the same thing, client employees or contractors to talk about business or shareholders. Those are 100% deductible this year again, and they will qualify under here. If we have a picnic, company's party, the holiday party could have gone here too, but I already put it in the other one. It's not a big deal. Amount of corporation spent and other meals and entertainment. Entertainment, I don't know why they have it here, but entertainment is not a deduction anymore in 2021. So um, maybe they will deduct it. So I wouldn't put any uh, money, any amounts here. Amount of spent entertainment that wasn't for the benefit of the employee. Yeah, entertainment is not deductible. Yes, it's 100%. 100%. See, they, will, they would have subtracted it if it wasn't. Um... Yeah, pay attention expenses. So yes, this is meals entertainment. We should have deduction. We should have 
uh, receipt and it's stating why we went to this uh, meal entertainment with who and that's it save it and put it in your computer somewhere submitting expenses to merchant fees most common so we did merchant fees now we do office supplies it should have a line of expenses so let's instead of using your own list try to use as much as you can from this list it's easier for you to go over the list and your expenses do that and then move on to the next ones uh parking that's probably on the vehicle rent and lease i saw it over here rent expense and then the amount of uh, office renting a lease yes hundred we had an office oh this is how much we pay a month i mean for the year <clears throat> repairs also has its own line basically all of these items go on the front of the the, the form 1120s and it has to be separately listed this is for equipment repairs three shipping and delivery let's go back to must common business expenses Brittany posters because we don't have shipping posters this will be the same as this 34 4 and small equipment yeah, it probably won't be listed so we'll just add it on other Taxes and licensing. There is another list for it. Tax. This is other taxes. Five. <clears throat> and now we have telephone, telephone expenses. Let's look for our telephone. It will be on the most common, common business expenses. We separate it here for our own purposes, but for for the IRS purposes, they just want the entire amount. Tech software. Let me enter th this, and I'll come back to you guys. Okay, almost done. One expense that I wanted to bring to your attention is this charitable contribution. Um. Yes our travel we made a donation of 85 or 150 it was cash so the reason why it's different is because this is this expense is not deductible on your tax return but instead it will be added to the k1 in the k1 you can enter that on your personal return and you will see that on your personal return as a schedule a a deduction if you take the itemized deduction but here um we'll enter if we make a donation if we made donations from our business directly to the charitable contribution or charitable organization okay and another one that i interest income interest income i want to go back to our income and now where are we back Don't no if, how do we go back done with deductions wait I want to go back how do we go back I want to go income so we're in deductions now we're going to go back to income because I forgot to enter my interest so the bank my business bank 
gave me some interest of $13 and I need to list it on my books or I'm sorry on the tax return income from investments interest and dividends there it is interest from banks $13 this is another it says none it's another item that will go on your k1 it will not go on your tax return no dividends it was just interest done okay so we're back on deductions I uh, think on deductions were pretty much done uh, we enter all of them so at the end what we want to see is this as net income our depreciation was 16 thousand fifty five and ninety four so basically I enter manually on my books a general entry with a depreciation of sixteen thousand it should be the same amount as on my tax return so we'll take a look at it oh here it is sixteen oh so if you haven't entered depreciation on your books then you will enter it after you enter the depreciation items on your tax return this is what it comes up. This is the same amount that it's on my expense. Okay. On your books, you will just enter a general entry. Uh, depreciation will be on your left side on your debit and accumulating depreciation will be on your credit side of the same amount. Okay. And done with deductions. Let's move to the next one. Oh, so we never went back to vehicle here is what i was missing the vehicle part let's update this part and we have vehicle field of 1032 the lease payment so in this case we lease the car for our for our business and those are the monthly payments if you purchase a car and you're making monthly payments those monthly payments should not be on your profit and loss those monthly payments should be on your balance sheet on your liability account and what you should have on your balance sheet will be a list and, and under liability will be auto auto exp or auto loan they they are auto loan amount and then a subcategory of all the payments that you're making against the loan okay so if the loan was ten thousand and the payments that you're making us are a hundred dollars a month then every month you should be allocating those payments to that account it should not be on your PL. and the reason is because in for tax purposes we are not deducting the loan amount when you purchase a car only when it's a lease car we can deduct the monthly payments but when it's uh, a purchase of a vehicle then we will depreciate it as you saw it we you can depreciate it either by taking the entire amounts pay if it meets the six thousand pounds requirement or taking the depreciation for up to five years but we do not take the loan payments we don't take both of them we take either depreciation or depreciation that's it the the loan payments are against the loan okay let's see so we have the lease payments of three thousand seven hundred eighty seven that we had paid here and then the repairs perfect and then here we'll ask us about the lease the corporate the corporation lease any car struggle more than the business for the business yes if we lease a car remember yes it might have to be reported it's asking if we need to uh, reduce the lease car and include the the amount back on our income back on our books as income but no the, in, the lease amount should be zero. Okay. Continue. Because we spend it all for the business. Nothing was for personal purposes. Okay, so the lease was for 100% business use. Um, and one thing I forgot that you put in here and there it was parking. That's why it's not highlighted. Parking is... I will, I think it should be on vehicle. Where is the vehicle expense update? Yes, parking in top. So three, three, five. Uh, it's asking the same question. Yes, zero. About the lease, we just have zero. That's fine. 
Okay, now we are ready to move on to the next item. I don't have any corporate new corporation expenses. I will really go so much on this item. You can skip cost of goods sold because we don't have any we don't have any cost cost we don't have any expenses related to sale of an item because we don't sell any items and bad debt expense we are cash accounting so we don't have any bad debt bad debt is only when you have accrual we're in accrual um accounting method so don't don't dig into those okay payroll matching so this is just telling you that what I said before, if you have a W-2, W-3 that you already filed with the IRS, make sure that, that that amount matches what you had said on your tax return. About you. Okay, so your reconciliations and balance sheet. There is, we have to reconcile income and retain earnings, but before we do both those two, let's do the balance sheet first. We're basically going to enter our numbers from the, our report, from our books, to the balance sheet account. Let's go here, edit. And the reason why is because we want to get those numbers and it probably will flow through and help us reconcile the other two. Now we'll do it. enter. And so the balance sheet again, you only need to input it if you are making, your sales are over 250,000 or your assets are over 250,000. In this case, our assets are 98,000 total assets, but our uh, sales for the year is over a million dollars. So we have to do the balance sheet. We have to present the balance sheet with our tax return. Um, so here we only have our bank accounts, which is 98,301, and that will be on our cash. Cash means bank accounts. And then we have this, this I entered manually and this two were entered by QuickBooks. Because remember, these are the, the, our fixed assets. What was our first expense on our list uh, where we listed all our, our depreciation items. So basically TurboTax just brought those items in minus the accumulated depreciation remember we depreciate all of it in one year so this minus this it's zero and that's what we have here as far as the depreciable assets we have zero so our total assets is basically only our bank accounts our cash cash and equals our total assets and 98,000 if you didn't depreciate all your assets on one year then you will have a number here which this number should equal the addition of all of this minus whatever was uh, your depreciation okay so that number needs to match to this this if it doesn't then there's something wrong when you enter your uh, numbers before or there's something that um, you're accumulating depreciation it's not showing it might be a little complicated so we can I have another course that will show you how what to do in this case but um, if you bought everything this year and you then it should you shouldn't this number should match everything in 2021 this number should match if not you can just input it and put the number here so on your report QuickBooks just click on this number and it will give you the list of all your assets minus the depreciation and you can look and see what it's missing or what's different than what's on your depreciation list in here so you will look at your depreciation items this is all it uh, this is this is the list that you want to look through see this is the number 16,000 matches our 16,000 which is basically addition of all this and then our depreciation our section 179 is our depreciation in this case if you didn't depreciate it all in one year you will see your depreciation amount on current depreciation you will see the entire amount 
and this is our accumulated depreciation. This is the numbers that will show on your balance sheet or that should show on your balance sheet. So this and this are the numbers that you're looking for that should be here because this is already on your tax return. Okay, this is detailed and the balance sheet is just basically we're just putting a sum number or the total. Okay, so we go back to the balance sheet and edit quick entry. So we already know that these two numbers match and we are happy. Nothing else is on our assets that we need to worry about. So we forward, we go to the next one. Sorry, I want to show you here. Total assets is 98,301. And here's the same as our balance sheet. Okay. Again, this is just our total numbers. We don't have to um, break it down. They're not asking for it here. Does it match your books and accounting records? Yes. Okay. And the next one is our liabilities. We have our liabilities here, which is basically our balance of our credit cards and payroll sometimes at the end of the year we don't pay our payroll so we have we owe this and your books will be nice if you run payroll through quickbooks you should have this nicely and shouldn't be too much too big numbers it should be something like this um okay so credit cards we enter our credit cards it we will enter it under liability in the short term uh, liability because we're going to pay within less than five, five one year okay and then we have our direct deposit payable is a negative number it's a small amount so i'm not worried i will typically well if it's a small or a negative number in one account i will enter it as an asset just so I don't show negative numbers, but we're going to add them all here. So in our actual final balance sheet, we won't see a negative number. So I'm fine with that because we have an 8,000 minus my plus. So we're fine. We'll list all our numbers here. Uh, what's on our balance sheet and our liability because they're sh short term liabilities. We don't have any big loans or anything like that. So we had a sb8 loan but we already paid it off that's why it's zero and basically nothing else this is very simple only credit cards so credit cards should be listed here and that's our liabilities and our equity accounts equity accounts are capital and retained earnings that shows here okay so i wanted to show you and pay attention to this number this is our distributions it's a negative number which is fine um, typically to, for this number to be positive is contributions that we made in but in this scenario we took money out of the business because we made money so it's okay to take money out from the business and I want you to make sure this number is correct how do you do that you will go into your report you click on this number and a list will pop out if the first number is zero then you're fine if it's not zero then you need to make the journal entry and i have done a course before but i'll show you here what it should looks like just so you have that on your hands now okay so when you open up distributions ownership honor pay and personal expenses uh this is a this is different numbers from the report that you saw previously so just this is what we need to do if the number is not zero. So this number should be zero because, because what it's doing here is distributions. They are, they're bringing in the distribution from previous years because the balance sheet account balance sheets don't, don't close. Like the profit and loss close at the end of the year. We start a new year with, you know, $1 of sale, but balance sheet, it doesn't close. So we have to manually close this, the, our distribution account. So it still is showing us distribution from last year, uh, but we don't want this. We want this number to be zero. Okay, and how do we make this zero? We do a, we do a journal entry. Okay, on QuickBooks, you will go on um, add and look for journal entry. Make sure you have the correct day. The day will, will, need, will need to be um, the beginning of the, tax year so it will be 1 1 2021 
and the accounts that we will be using will be owner's pay and personal expenses or the same account that you clicked on we clicked on that one for distributions that will be our credit and the credit amount will be the same the beginning number because remember we need to take to convert this as a zero so if it's negative we're going to credit if it's positive if a positive number then we need to debit it okay debit this account but in this scenario this is a distribution so it's a negative number and we are going to credit and what the other account will be retained earnings and that account will do the opposite we will debit it for the same amount and our description will be to close out distribution general entry in this case i put cpa one but you can put you know one two three four abc whatever name you want so you remember um the the general entries you're making okay so after you make this you will run the report again and you will have your zero at the beginning of the year your uh your distributions will start fresh starts from zero so that will tell us that any distributions that were made were made for this year 2021 we're not bringing any distributions from the previous year we're just doing distributions for our current year and that's what we want to see okay that's it so this i already checked and it did start it with zero so all of these are distributions for this year and we'll go ahead and enter it additional pay capital stuff okay so we will put it as distributions Remember, it's a negative number. And, and that's it. We don't enter net income. We do not touch that because that should be, that should come directly from QuickBooks or from the profit and loss that we previously entered. And return earnings, we don't enter the number either. The number should have been given by last year's return if it, if you did it on TurboTax if not we will enter it in the next section okay um, it does does it match no it will match soon hold on okay so we we said no we ignore the other two because what we're going to do now is going back to income reconciliation okay and then we'll finalize back to the balance sheet to make sure it balance so income reconciliation it does match to our income so we go to a profit and loss profit and loss we have 784 for all 12 okay doesn't match why a discrepancy for $13 basically $12 and I think it has to do with the interest that's the only number that is not matching yeah the difference is 12 bucks let's continue
So it has to be because look, we are the net operating income is different than here, and it's it's doing separately the interest, the depreciation, and donations. It's doing it separately. So there's some numbers here that we didn't, that we missed, we entered wrong. So let's go back and figure that out. I uh, know you will get this. It would happen. So let's go to income. Income, we have our number, number is right. Uh, and then we have our interest, which our interest comes from here. Income, we're done with income. We have a depreciation, salaries. Let's look for the big numbers. Advertisement. That I, I will do and I will fast forward is just do uh, my highlighting again and see if I miss something, okay? This is where's my highlight? Highlights, okay. So I verify our income is fine. And now let's go here. The first number that we have here is appreciation. Let's look for the appreciation highlight. Salaries, it matches our salaries. Payments to independent contractor. Tight. Retirement plan. Nothing on insurance. Payroll taxes. Common business. Let's click on that. So we have accounting. Sometimes you put a five before the nine and the nine, it, you just got to go over all the expenses again. Make sure we have them all correct. Legal and professional fees. Legals, uh, nine, nine, yeah, it adds up to one. Um, yes, what is this? Office expense. Office expense right here. Shipping, $34, tools, do, do, do. no, not tools, sorry, telephone, 852, utilities, 445, next, Sorry, we're here. Now taxes. Let's go to state taxes. So we have ninety six forty four hundred seventy five, which includes this one and this one. Also, we have one fifty a for here. The state taxes. Those now let's go on rent and rent rent should be one line. Ties, repairs and maintenance. Mm. Right here. Advertisements, we already have it. It's our, we put it as custom consoles just for internal purposes. Because this is an advertisement company and so we want to see what our direct expenses which is advertisement because we need to make advertisement to get advertisement but in reality cost of goods sold is if you sold something then no did i did i went too far oh look here i think i found it here is our little friend, Meals and Entertainment. It was 6101 and I put 6110. Oh, it happens all the time. And 101. Okay, oh, let's see. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's see now. Income and reconciliation is our number. Oh, okay, it's off by $2. Okay, so what we do in this case to get it, we what we need to reconcile all this is that we have to have the same number. 
So what can our box do or can our tax return do to look exactly like our box by $2 is we'll just take off an expense because we're rounding up most of the time. So we go back to deductions and no, oops, let's not mess that one. The most common business expense. I would just go to office expense and reduce it by two. I'll do three instead and I think now we should have our number. Income, see, it's our number, that's our number. So if it's off by one, two, up to five, five dollars, then we'll just go in there and adjust office supplies just because we want it to be the same number, okay? And this, this, is, this happens because we're um, rounding up and some, you know, end up more than the other one, so that's why. Okay, so yes, the corporate books match. So we have our first number to match, yay. In balance, now a retained earnings says it balances by itself, which is fun, doesn't match your retained earnings, books and records. So based on your entries, we we'll calculate your balance and your retained earnings to be zero. No, it's not. We are retain earnings. If we go back to the balance sheet, retain earnings, we already see this number. This will always be the beginning retain earnings. Okay. It's not zero. Our retain earnings is not zero. Okay. Um, because retain earnings means that we had business last year and we have to retain it our, our, any, after distributions. This is how much we retain in the business and it forwards to the next year. And we need to enter our retained earnings here, okay? So beginning retained earnings will be this number. It doesn't say here beginning or ending, so just make sure you know when you see retained earnings, it's beginning balance, okay? As of December 31st, this is our beginning balance. Uh, let's not put anything on ending because ending is basically our addition to all of these three numbers. And it should do it, the computer or TurboTax should do it, but if not, we will enter manually. Okay, let's go, books in, total difference. Okay, let's review now, what to do next? I'll review, make changes, retain and match books. I'll review retainers later. Let's do that later. Okay, not a balance sheet. Let's go back. Now we have 98,000. Yes, our assets match. 98,000. Sorry, here, the assets match. And now our liability should match as well. Our, our liability and retain earnings should match 98,000. Um, and the reason why it doesn't match is because retain our uh, distribution does not go here. Uh, this this is adjustment to shareholders equity and explanation. Do not touch this base over here. That was my bad. Okay, so we have our equity accounts. If we don't have any capital, additional paying capital or treasury stocks, then we move on to the next one to enter all this. What are capital stocks? When you form your corporation, uh, you will issue some stocks. So if you have them, then you will enter. If not, um, only if you form directly a corporation, I think LLCs don't have to have that or don't have that. Additional pay in capital. So if you made additional contribution into the business throughout the year, you will have that there. And treasury stocks. I think if you pay uh, one of your uh, member shareholders out, uh, those payments should show here. But it's just me again. I'm 100% owner. Simple as it gets. We don't have to worry about any of this. Okay. So your total liabilities match 98,300. 98, it does match, um, and we enter these numbers. Or just the distribution is the number that we're waiting for to enter later. Or I think we already enter it. That's why it's given it's tying to this account or to this number. Does the book does this match your books? Accounting records, yes, yes, it matches. 
So final number. Okay, we're off by one. Great, that's fine. Well, let's see if they enter our distributions. Yes, they did enter our distribution. Maybe if we move that to eight. If stop being off by one. Yep. So right before, based on the number that we entered, we were negative by one. So what I just did, I went up to our distribution number. And instead of rounding it up, I just rounded it down. Basically, I didn't put any cents. And that took off the one. It could be up or down, so you can play with that number, just one, two cents. Okay, so this is what our liability or our balance sheet in the tax return would look like. Assets is our bank accounts, cash. Then we go down and we see our building and accumulated depreciation. It should be zero. Perfect. That's zero. Our total assets should be 98. 301 uh, our liabilities we already describe them or itemize them on the other one on the other page so we have this amount and our retain earnings it's our beginning retain earnings so retain earnings is basically our beginning retain earnings minus distribution plus net income and that should give us this number 90,000 this number 90,241 okay it seems like we're doing a great job here and uh, zero this is the number one zero and zero we don't have zero here because last year we didn't do our taxes with turbo tax and we couldn't that's why we need the tax return but this company wasn't an S corporation last year so we didn't have a balance sheet so just to make it easier and not to have a zero balance, we'll just enter the same amount of the same amount as here as cash and gives us a zero. Zero, zero, we're happy. We don't have any um, discrepancy, any red flags. Okay. And this is our books. What are our books? looks like and our adjustments so adjustments so we're good uh, what is the beginning okay i don't want to mess you guys up with this but this also matches our retained earnings our total equity accounts and that's what we want this is the schedule is you just scroll all the way down and you will see it m2 Okay, so it's about tying numbers. This number should match this, and all of this should match what's on our tax balance sheet on the tax return, which it does. And we have zero, zero, balance sheet out of balance by zero, zero, we're fine. Um, No, don't worry about this. I'll read my balance sheet later. That's, I think it's giving you that me message because it, we had a negative number, but now we already fixed it. Maybe we fixed it here. We have to fix it in the other one. Let's see. Not balance. Maybe we'll enter. Okay, now we're in balance. Uh, okay, and everything is in balance and we are good. Tax credits, don't go there. It's a little more complicated than you think. Um, buy alternative fuel, castle, uh, again, I wouldn't go there. Two select vehicle, make a model. Wait, we did, no. 
Carver can continue. Back. Well, remember we didn't buy any vehicle. Own or lease the vehicle. Yes, we did lease. Next, we will ask for mileage for shareholder and the mileage one vehicle at a time. Skip vehicles, continue. We don't need to enter miles. I don't know why it's asking you for miles, but we don't need to enter miles because we determined that the business, the car is 100% business. And we already took out the entire deduction based on what we calculated on our on our profit loss. If we do something funky here, it will probably deduct our for our, our vehicle from 100% to 50 and then it will get our numbers off instead of being 50. It's, it's just not going to be fun. Okay, select that you should our vehicle filing list. Yes, owns more. Who owns more than 5% of the company? I am the driver. What is it asking me? Uh, they don't ask for S corporations to give you. Okay, well, the average business miles in, in a year is 12,000. Zero community miles, because everything is business. Zero personal. Um, yes, it was about, um, no. It, okay. Check out guys. And it was primarily used by Madison. Yes, that's it. Yes, they had another vehicle for personal use. Done. No. Do you want to work on this credit for a small... No. Any foreign tax? Okay, so the one before is if you had health insurance and if you had it for your employees. Something like that. I. Even if I had insurance for myself, I wouldn't go and do this credit because you need to have employees and have to have pay. I, yeah, I don't want to explain this and I don't want you guys to get confused. Any foreign tax? No, I don't pay any foreign tax through my escort. I pay foreign tax through my personal stocks. So I, that's not what we're, that they're asking here. Election forms. To complete any of this, check the responding box. Election not claiming is special. No election for them. Why are they making this complicated? We're not doing any of this. Thanks. Continue. No, we don't want nothing for business and the QBI. Oh, yes, this is the QBI. The income of a business conducted, you said, consider a QBI. Uh, it's unfortunately for this business, it doesn't because it made we made too much money and that is a threshold in of oh, I think three hundred thousand. Let's just enter yes, this my QBI. Mm. Yes, I am one of them because all of this are consulting. Yes, the business receives significant income requiring skills on this field. So if you have a consulting, you're a streamer, you, your brand is you, like the business wouldn't work if you weren't working, then then we'll click yes. If not, if let's say you are selling a product and nobody knows who's, who you are, they just buy it because the business name and it can the business basically can can replicate without you then you will click no but if the business needs you then we'll do yes basically if the business is you it says consulting the amount of consulting listen to you if there's any difference everything is the amount of income and deduction listed may affect the size of qbi make any adjustments if needed no that's it everything is me everything that i made was 
my business i don't have any type any of this income does not come from any other sources like I, again i didn't sell any products or any of that i don't want you guys to get confused here so just don't make any adjustments just let's review this really quickly yes yes and unfortunately yeah we don't have any qbi because we made too much money. I think it's 300,000, the limit, and we, are, we have 800,000, so if you have 800,000, you probably be able to get it. Then more time to file, you can request an extension and not have to wait until, nope, we are ready. Do we need to file the amendment? No, nope. this is the original tax return, we haven't filed a previous tax return for 2021 for that corporation so no no we don't need part of return we don't need anyone to represent us employ your own life insurance as nope an officer's signature that's me Used to writing my name. Um, president. And the signature is today's date. Congratulations, you're almost done. Let's check for errors. Wait. Now you're ready to check errors in your federal tax record. You to go back and play sections. If I didn't review. Make sure taxes are correct. We found five areas of your federal tax return that we do review your entries. We'll handle it one at a time. Okay, let's see. I again, I don't know why they ask for vehicles. Oh, because I went too fast and I click yes on no. Okay, we don't. Quad one to quad an alternative motor vehicle worksheet. No, okay, let's go to federal review. Continue. No, check it. Okay, so to go back to the credits, it's on you go to federal taxes, others, credit continue. Continue, delete, yes. Here's what you need to, you can add, no, we don't want. How do we opt not to be part of that? Do you purchase a hybrid? No. Next, we will ask some questions about the vehicle your company may provide. But it's not affect your tax return. Delete vehicle. Skip vehicles. There we go. We just we don't want want to enter even the miles, I guess, for the vehicle uh, because that will bring it back. Bring your the credit. So again, let's go back to here. Continue. Continue. No. Continue. No. Even if you have a vehicle, no. Because it will select it for a credit. If we don't want it to like, you know, we don't want to get credit for this because it's not, my car is not, um, okay, we, okay, we already explained that. Now let's go to review. Okay, we still found one, in, one error. Let's see. Calculate and print shareholder stock and databases, and then yes, yeah, sure. If they want to calculate your basis limitation, let them do it. Basis are basically what you have on the business. 
as as a contribution how much is your equity in the business because one day this business might have a loss and in order to take losses you need to have some basis and let's see yes good news US version recent years this is just telling us the audit risk for the different type of businesses um, partnership and escorts are 0.4% of audit risk C corporation one is schedule C or higher schedule F nothing really will affect your return in here property distribution you have the distribution shareholders and page and now the distribution includes property cash showing yeah it's only cash nothing else no properties no skip this problem no we don't want no audit from them let's work on your stay return okay i think that's it we're done um back i don't want them to work on my stay return no thanks done with states there we go ready to file our tax returns i want you to e-file my return and remember at the beginning we did the form 2553 that we signed so we need to make sure that we'll attach it on this return before we e-file e-file my tax return and i don't want you to e-file my tax return print distributes print and save for your records thank you check yourself uh, let's see how we will be able to attach Continue. I know that. How many W2s we had? We had three. You will pull out your W2s and check how many you had or pull out your W3. But we have the W2s here. So one, two, and three. We had three W2s that we filed during the year. And if you file W-2s, then what you had filed during the year is 940s, 941s. That's it. Okay. Next, continue. Yes, that's me. Here. Okay, so we will print this form. This is what it looks like. We'll print it out, sign it by, by hand, and upload it back to your computer. Mm, continue just telling you what to do and we upload it back in here find an electronic copy I just put it on my desktop and location continue okay it's supposed to be signed so make sure you print it sign it and take a picture with your phone or scan it put it back in your computer and drag it and we also need to do the same thing for the form the election and i believe we already did it now let's see continue oh yeah attachment needed form 2553 so it's asking us for it and that's the other form that we that i showed early earlier the 2553 where you need to sign here and right here that's it, nothing else. Don't get scared about the other forms, you need to, need to fill it up. Okay, and we'll find the form. Let's say is this one, continue. And then that, that's it, we have those two attachments and we are ready to electronic file the return. We have our PDF attachments. I will e-file, but it will not get accepted because that's not in my EIN and that's not a real company, so. Uh, but I'll show you how to do it as we go. Make sure we can reach you after your email. Avenue.com. Let's see. They probably will send us our tax return. This is e filed. 
Yes, we want to preview, review those returns. Tax return only. I want to see the tax return. Uh, let's look at all the calculations. Forms review, keep running. Let's look at it and I'll show you what those forms are. So there's no, you don't pay anything with this tax return because it's a full through entity. And remember, if it's our first year filing this in, uh, we didn't file the election to be taxed as an escort. You can file as an escort, but you gotta make sure you complete the form 2553 and add this explanation on top. If you tell TurboTax to do it, they will enter this for you, um, as well as the um, print out the form 2553, okay? If you were an LLC or a C-Corp, and now you want to be taxed as an S-Corp, then that's what you have to do, the 2553. Okay, we'll go over our name, our address, make sure everything is un aligned, our effective tax day, our EIN. Those are two important things that we need to make sure we have it right. Is this corporation going to be an S-Corporation beginning of the tax year? Yes. So we form an LLC and we're, this is our first year we're doing an S corporation return. There's not an S corporation formation with the state. It's only an LLC or a corporation or a C or, or yeah, just a corporation, but S corporation is a tax election. So that's what we need to make sure we do it right. Okay. 1120S is the form that we need to file for an S corporation and the form 2553 if you haven't done it yet. Okay, so here's our gross or our gross revenue, expenses, this number ties to our books. Um, I want you to just look at the main things, date, you are the president, Consulting, advertisement, cash, all of this three are good. Majority of this will be no. No, 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 no. This is yes because we did file 1099s. Okay, and these are the deductions that are not deductible in our tax return, but instead it will be carried to our K1s. And so here. balance sheet exactly our our books look like okay we already reviewed this earlier so i don't want you to get confused just keep an eye on a few things if something comes up and you're like whoa what is this then yeah this is our what a k1 looks like k1 have our this is what it will be it will flow through our personal this is my name, this is who's receiving the K1 address, my social, make sure everything is correct. And then QBI, officer compensation, this is my W2, so I should make sure that I entering the same amount on my personal return. Not from here, but from the W2 that you received. So from this return, all you'll be entering is the K1. Okay, this is my 2553 election. This doesn't have to be signed because it's what they are sending, but the attachment is what needs to be signed. As long as you attach it, you're okay not seeing it here. Okay, everything looks good to me. Let's go back to here. Uh, skin, so. Yeah, I will save it. I will print the return and save this one. Tax return, all works your calculations. Save it as PDF, save it somewhere in your computer. And continue, choose me your tax return once you click away from, save the secure transmitting and following. So I will not 
trans um, transmit this return because again it's not a real return so I don't want the iris to to work on this um, if you have any questions any um, let's just do that this is where the return which has filed in one or two days I'll probably receive an email saying that it was rejected um, then we continue print the forms the government continue do you know how to create a k1 let's print our k1s so if you have if you had any other shareholders there will be a k1 printout for them too but with this k1 you can go ahead and complete your personal tax return okay and that's it print and save your return and take advantage of oh, no, no, no that's it and thank you for using TurboTax we're done we're done we did it we filed your tax return with TurboTax 